Economic weakness is spreading from one asset to another. Finger pointing has begun and it's going to become more heated as things get worse. Housing is being built at a record pace even though inventory is building up. Funds are watching their tech heavy portfolios see money fleeing in search of safety over growth. Oil is dropping and it doesn't seem to slow down at all. This should make for an interesting remainder of 2018. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about stocks, we're going to talk about oil, we're going to look at the markets, and I want to show you exactly what's happening right now. Let's begin by taking a look at this article out of CNBC. Dow falls more than 150 points post the worst Thanksgiving week decline since 2011. So in this article, they basically give you the details and break it down, but I'm just going to show you exactly what you need to know right now, and that is weakness on a day like today. And I was not expecting this at all. I was expecting at least the plunge protection team to come in, but perhaps they were on vacation. So we'll look further into this. I mean, you can see the markets, the top three on the right-hand side, S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones, all in the red for today. And you will notice that it's not too significant today. I mean, it is still a decline. And the Dow Jones is approaching the level where another big day would push it under 24,000. So we'll see what happens next week. It could easily drop below 24,000, and that would be significant. That would be a warning indicator for the markets because if it goes down a little bit more than that we're going to enter into a bear market territory so we'll have to see where it goes at 178 points down on a day that i thought would be positive that's not looking good there's a lot of infighting there's a lot of finger pointing there's a lot of concerns whether it's because of oil whether it's because of you know any sort of other market interaction that is taking place today it doesn't matter as far as i'm concerned when we have have quantitative tightening, the market's going to fall. But I may have mentioned that once or twice before. Oil tumbles more than 7% to $50.42, now down more than 30% in seven weeks. This is when you know you have to be concerned. When an important asset such as oil tumbles down to $50, and that's a 30% decline in less than two months you know you have a problem. The latest wave of energy market selling comes amid escalating concerns about an increase in global supply and a slowdown in economic growth. They're also not factoring in the quantitative tightening. Is it so coincidental that we have the stock market, the real estate market coinciding with quantitative tightening? Is it so coincidental or is that exactly what's happening right now? The value of a barrel of oil has tumbled about 20% this month alone, adding to a seven-week streak of consecutive losses. Yes, it is beneficial to see oil coming down in price for the general economy because that means things are cheaper to ship, and obviously that's a good thing, but it doesn't ever, ever seem to bring the price of goods down. Do you ever see your food prices coming down when the price of a barrel of oil comes down? Absolutely not. It doesn't work like that. Sure, it can go up when oil goes up but it never seems to go down and when we have a 30% decline in the price of oil can anybody let me know who has seen a 30% decline in their prices of gasoline probably not let's continue on with the price here you can see where it has gone $50.42 it peaked out at the beginning of October along with the rest of the assets October has not been a friendly month to any asset it seems looking at this continuing on it did not stop at all it was supposed to be October was the bad month don't worry it's just October things will change and look at what has happened all throughout November the exact same pattern now this happens to be oil but look at equities as well they're following into the same exact pattern now we're looking at just two charts here they're trying to lay this out as being similar to what occurred in 2014 2015 I don't know if that's gonna be the case but certainly we could see oil drop down to $30 a barrel it wouldn't surprise me but that means we've got some serious issues at hand so this is just another chart showing us what has happened in the recent past and we look at this no hiding place 
place in the last two months. MSCI World Sector Performance, whether it is everything from utilities and staples to real estate to consumer discretionary and IT tech stocks, it gives us this notion that no longer is there a safe haven when you look at the general financial analyst investment strategy. Okay, do we put you in bonds? Do we put you in equities? Do we put it in growth equities? Or do we put it in staples? Do we put it into some cash? Nothing really seems to be safe and secure at this time when you could look at it here on this chart and realize over the past two months, things have not looked good and they've been all up and down. There has been no clear winner here during this time frame. If we do see continued weakness, I think that would be positive for safe haven assets, particularly like something in the lines of gold, maybe even silver, would be able to benefit from the weakness because of that safe haven status that particularly gold tends to have. That would take a really big beating, though, uh, I believe initially because everything gets sold off. But when assets are trying to be held on to, generally what people do is they transfer their money into something like gold. A lot of people just put it into paper gold, which I don't agree with, but that's a whole different topic. Tech fund redemptions accelerate and you can see how much money has been moving out of tech stocks and that is not a good sign, not just for the tech stocks specifically, but even looking at the general markets. They are always watching these tech stocks like the FANG stocks in particular to be able to judge what's happening because so much money had moved into them, particularly throughout 2017. And while the market was looking very weak in 2018, some of these stocks were still seeing the benefits of the quantitative easing of the central banks and the easy monetary policies that money was sloshing around and looking for a place to land. And you'll see that that was generally seen as a good buy. However, this has really changed as of October. That just happens to coincide with all of these other assets that haven't been doing well. And so we see that here on this chart. Now this is an interesting comparison right now from the lion's share and you'll see the fang versus the original four horsemen. All right, CIMQ instead of the fang stocks, that is Cisco, Intel, Microsoft and Qualcomm. So comparing basically from 95 to 2002 and then from 2012 up until present for the fang stocks and just comparing the two of them and trying to see you know, if there is a lining up of these, if there is any correlation between the two. And according to this, they do suggest that the peak is over and that we are actually on a downward trend. We'll only know in a few years time as we look back on it, but it's just interesting to see the comparison between the two. You'll note that this happens to be a time frame in which things looked very, very positive for tech. Now, whether we're talking about 2018 or whether we're talking about the year 2000, everything was all about tech. Tech is the new thing. Tech is going to be the biggest thing in the world and you can't beat it no matter what the price is. It's worth more than that. There were 96% of analysts telling everybody buy 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 and that's a quote buy 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 on the amazon stock when it hit a one trillion dollar valuation and of course we saw what happened do not trust these analysts you need to do your own homework it is absolutely critical to do so of course you can get the information get the charts and keep an eye on them if i mention something to you and you think it's interesting but i haven't talked about it in a while then you need, definitely need to look it up and see for yourself because I can't get into everything obviously at all times. I'm just trying to bring you what's most relevant at that time. So I hope you appreciate it. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. I do really, really want to thank everybody for giving me a thumbs up all the time. Thank you very much. And if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books 
have it all. Definitely check out the link because when you go to the link, you're going to be able to flip through the pages of the books. In these books, I talk about everything, the foundation, the asset classes, how to make money, all of the details that you generally do not find out there. And I put it into a very, very easy to read set of books. All right. So these basically fit into each other like puzzle pieces. They're Although they do cover similar issues, I don't get into all the same things. So definitely check them out. And if you prefer the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.